I'm going to introduce Kelly Brown to you guys right now, and she's going to take it away and talk about what I looks like at Gmail. Thank you. Good morning. Um, like Alyssa said, my name is Kelly Brown. I'm the IV coordinator over at George Mason, which means I cover our MIT program for grades 9 through 10, and then I also cover our diploma program for grades 11 through 12. Um, the focus of today for me is to just give you guys some information about what your students will need to do if they're planning to participate in the diploma program as 11th and 12th graders. Um, so it is a little bit of a far off future, but we want to make sure that families and students are well aware as to what the requirements are as they're making their course selections in 9th and 10th grade. Um, as with all of our IB programs, they are very student-centered focused. So we are looking at all 10 of these learner profile traits as we're working in our classes. Um, our goals are to make sure that our students are well-rounded, to make sure that they have all of the opportunities, both academically and socially, to excel through their time in high school. With that in mind, 87% of the class of 2015, so this year's seniors, 87% of them are participating in the IB diploma program in some way, shape, or form, whether it's as a full diploma candidate or as a course of student. So it is something that you will see, you will hear about very much at the high school. Our students and our teachers take a very active role in the program. Um, parents and students will continually ask me, as they should, why should my student participate in the diploma program? Why is IB the option that we offer here at Falls Church City? Um, this is an article, and if you ever would like a copy, I'll gladly share it with you. But I've highlighted the four that seem to resonate the most with our students and with our parents. Um, the academic breadth and depth of the IB program is greater than the other programs that you're going to see offered in high schools around um, the U.S. We have these courses where we're encouraging our students to not just look at one finite area, but we also don't want them to have a huge survey course where they're glossing over everything as they go through the program. Uh, many of our HL, all of our HL courses are two-year courses. Um, so our students in the HL biology course, they're going to take two years of HL biology, and they're really going to have an opportunity to focus on both the breadth of the subject area as well as go into detail in certain aspects. Yes, what, what is HL? I'm going to walk you guys through that in just a minute. Yep. Um, the IB encourages critical thinking as we move into a new um, a new century with our students as we're trying to prepare them to be 21st century learners um, and be prepared for 21st century. More and more employers are coming to us telling us that they need workers that have critical thinking skills, that they can present them with a problem and they're gonna start problem solving and they're gonna work their way through these. Um, IB is very focused on working with our teachers and students to make sure that our students are critical thinkers, that they're analyzing, they're not just taking the information and repeating it back. They're taking the information, processing it, synthesizing, evaluating, and coming to their own conclusions. Excuse me? Yes. Um, do you mean by university, local domestic university, or abroad too? Abroad as well. The, inter the IB program is an international program, so it is internationally recognized. Um, it actually began over in Geneva before it ever came to the States. It was. Um, it was founded in 69 over in Geneva um, as a, a parent, a group of parents had come together looking for a different type of curriculum, and this is what they had developed for their students. It didn't venture over into the U.S. until the mid 70s, so it was well established internationally. Um, time management, one of the things, and it's, it's always sweet because our, our graduates will come back and they'll talk to us and we ask them, are you ready for college? How were things going? What was happening? They'll never admit it while they're in school with us, but the time management aspect is one of the greatest benefits that we can give our students. The diploma program is a very rigorous program. Our students are challenged academically. Um, oftentimes, they have to learn that balance. They have to figure out how can they do what they want to do extracurricularly, as well as maintain the grades and the standards that they've been maintaining throughout high school. So a lot of times, our students will come back to us explaining to us they learned time management. It's not something that's a very easy to teach trait. Um, I know I've been in the classroom for 11 years and I was always trying to teach my students time management. Something that's developed over time um, and the IB program gives them that time and that experience to develop the time management. They may struggle at times, okay, but the teachers and the faculty at Mason are there to support them through that. 
Um, and then the last part is it assesses more than examination techniques. Our students that are taking IB courses or diploma level courses are going to take exams at the end of that particular course, whether it's a one year course or a two year course. The beauty of the IB assessments is that it's not just one test at the end. Um, our students will complete various assessments throughout the course that will count towards their overall grade and they will still sit for exams at the end of that course. So for example, students in our English program, they have a written assignment that they'll complete during the course of the, the class. They have an oral assignment, or two oral assignments actually, that they'll complete. And then they have two exams that they'll take in May of the senior year. So it's an opportunity that they're not just sitting there for one day in May, fingers crossed it's a good testing day, and then we see how they do. They have that opportunity over time to be able to show what they've learned through the program. So it's not, um, just that one multiple choice test. The other thing that our students often find as they go to um, universities and colleges and then come back to us, we have very few multiple choice tests in IB. Um, I know for the English program, the foreign language program, it's all written assessments. So it gives the students this opportunity that they can talk their way through these ideas. They can talk their way into what they're trying to share with the examiner. It's not just a one was A, two was B. Um, so it does give them a variety of skills that they're gonna need as they go on to post-secondary education and then as they move on into the workforce as well. So which way do you go? Um, there are two options with the diploma program at George Mason. We have the diploma path and we have the diploma, or we have the IB courses. The diploma path is a path where our students are going to earn, at the end of it, they have the potential to earn the IB diploma in addition to a Virginia diploma. Okay? The other option are the IB courses where our students will have the opportunity to earn certificates in certain areas as well as their Virginia diploma. Okay? So it's really a conversation that needs to happen with the student, with the counselor, with myself, and with the family to see which path is the best fit for each student. Um, the differences between the path, diploma, per, diploma path has requirements. There are certain things that the students must do without a doubt. Okay? The courses path is more of the options or the a la carte path where the students get to pick and choose what parts of the IB diploma they want to pursue. Okay? So with the diploma path, the students are going to take six IB level courses, one in each group. Okay, so I have an English, a language, a social studies, a science, a math, and an arts or an elective, okay? They'll also complete the extended essay, CAS, which is our service learning component, and then the theory of knowledge course, which is an interdisciplinary course. So in order to be eligible for the diploma path, they have to complete all of those elements, okay? If there are courses path students, they can pick whatever they want. They could do one IB course. They could do four IB courses. Um, I have one student right now who is a courses student. She started out as a diploma student. She made some hard choices some of her junior year, or some of before her senior year. She decided that she didn't want to take French anymore. And okay? she was ending her studies in French. She wanted some other options in her courses. So she's taking five IB level courses, the extended essay, and theory of knowledge. She's considered a course of student. You can pick and choose whatever it is that best suits you as the student. Does that make sense? Okay. So when we look at it, the students are going to have a few options within their courses. And this goes to answer your question about higher level versus standard level. All of our IB courses are offered as either a higher level course or a standard level course. What it really comes down to are a couple of distinctions between the two. Higher level courses are required to be at 240 teaching hours at a minimum, okay? So all of your higher level courses will be two year courses. So if a student is enrolled in higher level biology, they will take higher level biology their junior year and their senior year, okay? So it does put some constraints on their schedule that they need to think through. 
standard level courses are going to be 150 hours each. We have a few of our standard level courses that are two hours based on our, or, I'm sorry, two years. Based on our experiences, that's what our students have needed to succeed. Um, and then some of them are also one year courses, so they add a little bit of flexibility for our students. The other differences with the courses, the higher level, you have some longer, some more intense um, assessments that are going to be associated with it. You may cover more topics. Um, they're still both very rigorous courses. One is going to go a little bit deeper and a little bit broader into the content area, whereas the standard levels may be a little more limited because they only require the 150 hours. Okay. They will study these concurrently. You'll hear IB and in various articles about IB, you'll hear people talking about the concurrency of learning. Okay. And the idea behind the concurrency of learning is that they're not learning these subjects in isolation. Okay. It's not just I learn my science stuff and then I go learn my math stuff and then I learn English and I move on. Okay. It's this idea that all of them are working together that you're going to see overlap between the courses as far as what information is being shared, connections to the courses, um, especially through the theory of knowledge course, students are starting to see math is not in isolation. Math and science can be connected. Um, a couple of the seniors about two months ago came into my office amazed that you can link math and English. And it was fabulous. The teachers had not planned it, but the math teacher was dealing with infinity and the English teacher was dealing with a text that had the cycle in it. And it was this constant cyclical motion. And the students all of a sudden started to see we don't learn in isolation, that things are all happening simultaneously and there are connections between the different courses that they're involved in. Um, you also have what they refer to as the three parts of the core. Um, IB just recently came out with their new um, curriculum framework. They took away my true core. Um, what used to, or what is still considered the core, but doesn't look like the core on here, is your extended essay, your creativity, action, and service, which is the um, service learning component, and then the theory of knowledge course. Every aspect of the IB curriculum is open to every student at George Mason. Okay, as long as they meet the prerequisites. Um, meaning, if you haven't taken pre-calculus, we can't have you take IB math that's out. Okay, you have to have that, that prerequisite component. Um, I've had students come into my office, they want to change their language. Okay, they come in and they say, I've been taking French for the last three years, I'm moving into my junior year, I'd like to start over with Spanish. Okay, we can't do that the way the IB program is structured. You have to be, by the end of your junior year, at a level four, or I'm sorry, moving into level four at a minimum. We can kind of tweak things, but it is a struggle for students to start over with that new language. So we do ask them to pay attention as they're picking their courses to those prerequisites, but really and truly the whole framework is open to them. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, mm -hmm. two questions. Uh, so do they have to take a minimum of H three HL courses? And for the diploma, yes. For the diploma. They'll take a minimum of three HL courses. Some students will push to four HL courses. Um, and I usually only approve those with great conversation with the families, with the student, with the teachers that the student has had, as well as the counselor. Um, because of the intensity of the higher level courses, it does tax our students a little bit more. And so with foreign language, can you repeat, by the end of their junior year? <coughs> by the end of their sophomore year. Sophomore year, they have to be moving into? They should be moving into at least level four of that language. Okay. If they're not, we'll work with them. We'll, because we do have students, <coughs> we had one a couple years ago, Actually, it couldn't be a couple of years ago. It was last year because he's still there. Um, he came in having learned, having done German. We don't offer German at Mason, so we did work out some different circumstances for him. But we do encourage our students to make sure that they're at least at that level four. Um, they'll find greater success with it. So they, if, if now they're in like Spanish two in eighth grade, mm -hmm. is it already too late to change? Or I guess this this year would be the. I would recommend their ninth grade year would be the last year. That for next year then. Okay. Yeah. What if they did, what if they're already in Spanish too, so they would be going into Spanish five in their junior year? They are in a fantastic position in that case. Okay. Yep. The students who are going to be eligible for Spanish five at that point 
are going to be more prepared for those assessments. They're going to be more ready. They'll find the content more accessible to them. So what do they do their senior year? Do they take us? It, it depends on what Spanish or what, um, if they're doing SL versus HL, uh -huh. that would be a dependent on them as well as what their choices are. Okay. Yeah. So, and what we'll do um, at the December of their sophomore year, so in about a year and a half, I'll sit down with all of the 10th graders and we'll go through the different options they have. I'll talk to them about the IB program, why they might want to consider the diploma, why they might want to consider the courses. And then I meet in small groups and then individually with the students as they develop their diploma plan. They'll map out based on what they've done in ninth and 10th grade, they'll map out what they want to do for junior and senior. Um, so, mm -hmm. I'm sorry if you're going to get to this. So, this is like in two years that they're actually going to decide. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds like there's some choices that if they make the wrong ones at this point, they'll be precluded from certain things. I mean, Very rarely will they be precluded. They might be more limited in their options. Okay. Okay. And that's part of our program of studies that you'll find um, for the high school includes this recommended course sequence. It is not required. Right? It is not a requirement. We have students always that are going to be an exception. We have modifications that we've had to do for these things. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But it walks you through, group one is our English program. Okay, So it'll walk you through the recommendations for our students in English. If you notice, English is probably the easiest one out of all of them. You take English 9, either English 9 or Honors English 9, English 10 or Honors English 10, and then you have your choice of moving into the HL or the SL um, course. It's very straightforward for our students, okay? Your second languages is very similar, right? Depending on where you are now, you progress your way through, okay? Just because it does not list Spanish one on there or French one or Mandarin mm -hmm. one, doesn't mean our students can't take those courses, okay? We've just found experience with our students. They are more prepared for success in grade 11 if they've at least had one year of that language at the middle school. Doesn't mean they can't do it, okay? It's just what we've found over the course of time. Um, individuals and societies is the IB term. In the state of Virginia, we call it social studies. Um, they have the different options of what they wanna take. They have a whole great deal of electives in that area. Um, this is where the conversation, excuse me, the conversation between the counselor, the parents, the students, and myself is of the utmost importance. Our students, if they're pursuing the IB diploma, also have to meet the requirements for a Virginia State diploma. The IB diploma cannot preempt a Virginia diploma. Okay, so I work very closely with the counseling department at George Mason to make sure as we're setting up these diploma plans for our current 10th graders, that they're meeting those requirements in order to graduate. I never want to find out second semester of a senior year that a student has missed a core course because of what they've taken for IB. Um, so we work very closely together. Group four is your experimental sciences. Okay? Also incorporated into group four for IB is computer science. The state of Virginia does not believe that computer science is an experimental science yet. Um, I do know there's a big push in the state for that. They haven't gotten on board yet with it. They may eventually, okay? And then mathematics is group five. This is where some of the decisions will happen. When you get the program of study, when your student receives the program of studies, there is a chart in the math, the math section, and it walks you through. If you take algebra one in ninth grade, this is what you'll take in 10th grade, what you could take in 11th, and what you could take in 12th. This is the section that I highly recommend parents and students sit down and look at because this is where it becomes very individualized as to where your student is on the math curriculum. Okay. In ninth and 10th grade, students are required to take physical, physical education. Okay. That usually fills up their ninth and 10th grade spot. And then in 11th and 12th grade, our students will take what we call the theory of knowledge course, that interdisciplinary course. To make sure that it covers two years for the students, but doesn't take away too many elective options. We've moved it so that they'll take theory of knowledge the second semester of their junior year, okay? So our current juniors are prepared to start TOK in the next couple of weeks. 
and then they'll finish the course semester one of their senior year. Okay? So they have those two semesters on either side to fill in with electives if they choose. Okay? And then the last section for IB is group six. Group six is truly known as the arts group, but IB recognizes that not all students excel, have a passion for, have a desire for the arts. Okay, so what they allow students with the option is they can take one of our arts IB courses, either music, theater, visual arts, or film studies, or they can take a second language, okay, so they can do French and Spanish, okay? They can take a second social studies, or they can take a second experimental science, okay? So that group six gives them a few options in there. Okay? My biggest recommendation with, this, with the course sequence that we've shared is to look at what your student has done in eighth grade, have that conversation with your student as to what it is they're looking to do, talk with their counselor, have those very open and frank conversations so you can start seeing, do they wanna pursue the full diploma? Are they looking to pursue bits and pieces of it in their areas of interest or their areas of strength? By having those conversations, it's not a rule, it's not a if you don't do this, we can't do that type of situation for most things. And we do have some flexibility with the program, but we wanna make sure that parents and students are aware as they're starting to look at what they're gonna do at the high school level. Okay. Questions on that? Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I have more questions. Um, is this printed somewhere? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, online or you have it here? It'll be, Ms. Cardano, it's when we have the program studies. Oh, um, I hate the acronym for it. The end of January. Okay, great. Uh, and so if this is too specific, we can talk about it separately, but my son plays the trumpet, so that's band. Is that included? Is that a music elective, or is that, where does that fit in? And then... Is that, you would need to have the conversation with Miss West um, as far as how it's going to fit into music. Miss um, West is the um, instrumental music teacher at the high school level. She can always, I always defer to her on the music end of it because it does become very specific. Um, at the high school, we still offer the contract band for our students, so that tends to be where they go. So does that count as one of their electives? It was one of their electives for IB. Um, for one of their electives for just a regular I, I guess my, my concern, it, he, my son loves computers, mm -hmm. so he's going to want to do any kind of computer programming yeah. option available. He wants, he says he wants to do the diploma, so mm -hmm. that was my instruction leading this morning. He said, Mom, find out if I can do both. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of confused I do have whether... students who have done both. <coughs> so what we can do is I can sit down with you and with him, and we can start looking at how the different options that are out there. Okay, so when you say the extra electives, you could do if the arts group, if you didn't do an arts group, and band is not included in that. That's actually like a music theory type thing you're talking about here. With, yep. Um, uh, you could do second language, second study, social studies, second experimental science, but mm -hmm. computer's not considered an experimental science. Computer's considered an experimental science in IB world. It does oh, but not, not in Virginia. Count as one of the sciences in Virginia. Okay. All right. So when your student's That's counselor will talk about the three versus four laboratory sciences in Virginia, computer okay. science does not count as one. Okay. All right. That's great. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, I know, oh, sure. Uh, so uh, IB students are complete to take ACT tests, right? To to be to be take which test? SAT test. They do, we, that's a complete, SAT is going to be completely different than IB. We do recommend that all of our students take the SAT courses, or SAT tests for um, college applications. So, uh, uh, what is it? There are many overlappings between, for example, the standardized program and IB program in USA. Yes, we do. We have it set up where certain IB courses will meet both the IB requirements and the state of Virginia requirements. So like every student's required in the state of Virginia to have four years of English, okay? So IB, either HL or SL English, the two years they would take junior and senior year, count towards those four years worth of English. Um, every student in the state of Virginia is required to have US history. And okay? we have the option for our students to take IB history, HL, history of the Americas, that fulfills their US history requirement. Okay, so there are overlaps. It's not as though they're completing two separate diplomas in high school, there are over opportunities for overlap. Um, the Diploma Corps, again, just so you're familiar with it, CAS, 
we do require, it seems very odd to require it, but we do require it. We require our students to participate in creativity, action, and service. Okay, so our students will complete. It's similar to service learning, except it's a little bit broader. Um, action, we ask our students to take um, the opportunities to find physical and mental well-being. Okay? If your student participates in a sport, they will go above and beyond with all of our action. Okay? Creativity, we ask the students to look beyond the basics and move into some idea of creation. Um, very often when I talk about creativity, students get very nervous because they all think they have to make an art piece. It's not art, okay? It's that idea of creating. Our students would model United Nations. If they are creating a brief, okay, that counts as creativity. Okay? They're taking something, they're developing it, and they're making it their own. Um, and then service is your traditional service learning. So our students will participate in all of those elements during their junior and senior year. Um, they'll complete the extended essay, which is an independent research process. The students have the opportunity to select a subject and a topic that interests them. They work with an advisor and they develop a research question. They complete the research and then they write their extended <coughs> essay. Bless you. They write their extended essay on that particular topic. It's a 4,000 word essay. Every time I tell students 4,000 words, I see their eyes get really big and they panic. Okay? I actually tend more on the end of, I have to tell my students to cut down their extended essays than lengthen their extended essays. And typically it's because they're picking a topic of interest to them and once they start writing, it's very hard to stop on something that you're passionate about. All right, so they'll complete that in junior and senior year and then the theory of knowledge course where they're looking at how learning is connected in all sorts of areas. Okay? So they will have the opportunity to complete all three of those as either a diploma student or as a course of student. It's entirely up to them. Bless you. Okay, so what do we do next? I encourage all ninth graders to take appropriate and challenging courses. Okay? The appropriate part is the very important part for them. Okay? They need to make sure that they look at where their skill level is, where their passions lie, as they're making those decisions. Um, talking with the counselor about the desire to seek the full diploma or the, course, the selected courses so that planning can take place. So we can start looking at how are we going to move forward if that's our end goal. Okay. Enrolling in at a minimum of Spanish, French, or Mandarin 1 as a freshman, we do strongly encourage they are at that second year when they come in as freshmen. If it's a situation where they haven't had the opportunity, they need to change languages, we can make that decision, but usually I tell them after freshman year, no changes, okay, because it comes too difficult for them. And then if you do have any student-specific IV questions about their schedule, how it's going to work, we can look through their courses ahead of time. Please feel free to contact me. Um, I realize it's on a separate page, but... Um, there is my contact information, my phone number over at the high school, as well as my email address. Um, please feel free to contact me if you want to schedule an appointment with you. I always encourage parents to bring their students along. Um, the tough part about these information sessions is the students aren't here with us. Okay? So I do want to make sure that we do keep that constant loop where everybody's a part of that conversation so that we can hear from the student as to what their hopes and desires are. They're not having to send you guys out to find the information for them. Any questions that you guys have? Yes, sir. What, what percentage of a graduating class would receive an IB diploma? Um, this year, we have 25% of our 25% uh, of our seniors are pursuing the IB diploma. We had the same percentage last year. Actually, I think we had the same percentage for about five years. But as our student body grows, that number of students is growing. Last year, we had 87% of our students who pursued the full IB diploma earned it. The year before, we had 100% pursue it. 100% of the 25 pursued it and earned the diploma. Other questions? Yes, sir. The HL is more intensive, right? Mm -hmm. So do colleges accept that for credit? Various like colleges go in various directions. Uh, we have some colleges in the states and in Canada and overseas that will take the take any IB courses and they will give you full credit. Um, there's some colleges that will only accept credit for HL courses. 
it's dependent on each college's decision making. Um, so I always encourage students and parents, look at the colleges you're thinking of and see what their, um, excuse me, what their particular requirements are. Um, I have a comment, because I also have a senior, that um, there are a lot of students that take IV courses without being in the yes. IV courses or IV diploma program. They're actually technically IV courses students. Oh, okay. Yep. They right. Even though they aren't doing the mm -hmm. extended essay. You don't, for, <laughs> to be an IV courses student, you have to take one element of it. Yep, so 87% of our current seniors have taken at least one IV course, or they've done the extended essay, or TOK, or CAPS. Okay, it's a huge program within our school. Our students are very active in it. Yes, sir. So I think that was a little confusing. The, to just be a student, a participant, you don't have to do just one part. You don't have to do the uh, essay. Correct. It looked, it looked like you had one course plus. Yep. No, nope. yeah. it's any of these options are available to you. Yep. I will fix that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yes. I noticed you didn't mention NYP. Our students that are eighth grade students right now will not be part of the NYP program. Anymore. They will be. Mm -hmm. They will be. We're uh, adopting NYP as a whole school program. So all of our ninth and tenth graders next year, we will be participating in NYP. It doesn't necessarily impact their choices for the diploma options. 